All right, good morning, everybody. Thought I'd bring you along for today's boat project. So today we're doing VHF radio install. So we'll be doing uh, this guy, Standard Horizons 2400 uh, Bravo model. Comes complete with the GPS receiver, AIS. So that should help me get some, uh, you know, some contacts offshore. Got an eight-foot Shakespeare antenna and some RG8 coaxial cable. So hope, hoping about 20 feet or so of that uh, should give me some good range on this uh, on this setup. Uh, I'm looking for about at least 20 or 30 nautical miles, so uh, which is perfect for coastal cruising uh, and some of that stuff that we're doing here. So uh, yeah, I'll take you along the journey with me today. Enjoy. It's also a good idea to have some of this other great equipment on here. This here is an EPIRB. This saves lives. Basically, what happens is this hits water. This automatically comes loose. It's a hydrostatic release. And lets off this beautiful emitter here that sends off a beacon up into space for satellites to uh, basically send a signal out to the Coast Guard to come get you. Uh, continuously sends a signal until they find you. Uh, so this is a great life-saving device to have on any boat. Um, yeah, highly, highly encourage putting these on your boat, guys. All right, so here's some of the bits here. This will go onto the stanchion here. And this allows it to be adjusted. So we'll go ahead and... Get to work. Okay, it's got the rail mount mounted. Now I gotta feed the wire through this hole, through the stanchion here, and the idea is to have it route through the stanchion hole, come through here, through the decking, so that way everything stays dry. Worst thing about coaxial cable is the moisture. Okay, so change of plans, we're gonna put it through the stanchion here. Because I think it's gonna be easier to drill a hole from under the boat. So I don't know if you can see it, but uh, these three holes here correspond to the stanchion outside. So the idea is to just, I'm going to drill a pilot hole here and I'm going to feed the wire up through that. So it's a little easier to pass to the radio inside here. But yeah, the, you really want to keep moisture out of coaxial cable. That's one way to really ruin comms there and antennas. But uh, anyway, so that's the idea. We'll go ahead and see if that works. All right, y'all, before you ever drill holes in your bolt, salt professional. Uh, or just go to YouTube. There's a lot of people drilling holes in their boat on YouTube. But uh, let's go ahead and drill some holes in the boat. All right, everybody, there's our hole. So if we get kind of up in there, let's see that uh, we have a we drove that pilot hole right through the stanchion. So now what I'm gonna try to do is uh, see if I can get my electric uh, wire, uh, you know, conduit uh, fisher tool thing. I forgot what it's actually called. But basically you just send it up through the conduit, in this case the stanchion, and try to try to pull it through on the other end. But uh, it may not be big enough, so I might try some power wire. 10 gauge might do it, so we'll see. And let you know how that comes out. Here we are. Got the mount finally on there. So you can see the drilled hole there. So we're gonna feed the wire through here, into the back, and then to the radio. Alright, so we got the cable and extension here, it goes through. And uh this four thousand here, I think it's forty two hundred, but basically some sealant because there can, there's a little bit of a gap there with the cable sliding under there. Um, it should be fine for, for a cable, but just to keep it dry, we wanted to put some sealant around this extension plate. But yeah, so far, we need to get this uh, water tight here, so we'll get some silicone sprayed in there. And that should keep that nice and dry. Another note, guys, is uh, every boat should have a ship's log, basically, uh, to record any significant things that uh, you know happens while you own the boat uh, it could be very interesting uh, but you know you always have something to reference back to you you know on your underway periods so basically it's uh, it's just a record of the boat's life so I highly recommend anybody out there sailing these days if you own a boat make sure you keep a ship's log here we are day two took a little longer than I thought yesterday getting the antenna set up I uh, just really wanted to make sure that I had it in a you know protected conduit so that way I can keep moisture out but anyway, so what I'm doing today is basically the easy part is just mounting it. Um, 
I missed all the wiring and stuff, but uh, I have some other videos and stuff of wiring up the build, for instance. And goes through a basic of what you need to think about. Mainly, you know, making sure you're using shrink tube and keep the moisture out. Uh, if you haven't noticed, moisture is an issue on a boat uh, when you're running electronics or anything. So mainly, uh, you know, common issues are found there or fuses too. Depending on what type of fuses you're using. So anyway, without further ado, let's go get back to work. All right, everybody, radio is installed here. I decided to put it over here because, as you see, the opening there uh, from a previous radio. Uh, I had to factor in sort of, you know, water coming in from the outside, and it seemed like putting it over here would get a little bit more, uh, you know, a little bit more vulnerability there with the moisture and the water coming in. So just tucking it under here seemed to be a much better approach with it. So that's what went into my thoughts uh, or my thought process on putting it there. Um, but yeah, it works. We have GPS and AIS now, which is going to be great on our next passage here coming up shortly. All right. So the reason I went with the standard 2400 Bravo model uh, is because it's got AIS. AIS and GPS, but AIS is a uh, is a really cool, neat tool for those who do know, and for those who don't. Basically, AIS is uh, the radio version of the internet out here, where uh, folks can broadcast their information all the way up to who they are, the port of call, their last port of call, things like that. So, just information you want to pull up about the boats that are broadcasting their their AIS. This one doesn't broadcast the signal, but you can definitely get the accessories uh, to plug and play there for your for your AIS. But uh, AIS is a really cool feature. It's not quite replacing uh, what you would get from radar. Radar is obviously going to be a lot more accurate, uh, definitely you know better for navigation, things like that. But AIS can definitely keep you, uh, you know, give you some rest at night, so you know you can program alarms to go off within a certain closest point of approach. Uh, so if you're sleeping and uh, you happen to be near some shipping lanes, something like that, AIS uh, may get you up in some time to make some adjustments to your course or whatnot. But basically. Uh, these are coming, becoming more common now. You're starting to see AIS, GPS, uh, VHF, transceiver combos, which are really, really neat in my opinion. Uh, sort of, you know, one-stop shop for everything. But uh, if you're looking for a radio that does all that kind of stuff here, uh, I'm trying out the Standard Horizon here. It seems to be doing the trick. But uh, yeah, if you like this, uh, like, share, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And we'll hopefully uh, do a little bit more of these videos here coming up.